In this video, you'll learn how to titrate the amount of magnesium hydroxide in milk of magnesia using materials that you can buy at most grocery and retail stores. The color changes observed in this experiment are really kind of interesting. To carry out the experiment, you'll need milk of magnesia, droppers, clear plastic cups, white vinegar, water, and some green colored natural food dye. Make certain that the green food dye you use is not the regular version, but rather the type that's made from natural sources. You'll see turmeric and spirulina extract in the ingredients. You'll also need a kitchen balance that's capable of measuring to the nearest hundredth of a gram. To start the titration, place a clear cup on the balance and zero it out. Then using a dropper, add between a half and one gram of milk of magnesia. Be sure to shake the bottle of milk of magnesia well prior to adding it. Notice the white color of milk of magnesia. The white color comes from tiny solid particles of undissolved magnesium hydroxide in the milk of magnesia. We're going to try to figure out how much magnesium hydroxide is in the milk of magnesia. Okay, it looks like we've added 0 0.65 grams of milk of magnesia. Let's make sure we write that down. Now I'll add some water to the milk of magnesia and swirl. Next, we'll add one or two drops of the green food dye. The green food dye acts as an acid base indicator. The dye appears orange-red at high pH, yellow around pH 8, and green in neutral or acid. Notice that the indicator appears red when added to the magnesium hydroxide, indicating the mixture is basic. The basic nature of the mixture arises because a small amount of magnesium hydroxide dissolves, producing basic hydroxide ions. Let's zero out the balance and get ready for the titration. We're going to add vinegar, which contains 5% acetic acid by mass. Watch what happens when I add some vinegar to the mixture. Isn't that cool? The color changes to yellow and then fades back to red again. What's going on here? Well, addition of vinegar, which contains acetic acid, introduces H plus ions into the mixture. This lowers the pH and changes the color to yellow or even green. However, the remaining undissolved particles of magnesium hydroxide react with the added H plus ions and neutralizes them. Then, a small amount of any remaining magnesium hydroxide dissolves. This restores the high pH, bringing back the red color. The overall chemical equation is shown on the screen. You might want to write this equation down. We're going to need it later. The goal of the titration is to add just the right amount of acetic acid in the vinegar to completely react with the magnesium hydroxide in the milk of magnesia. There are two observations that will signal that the reaction is complete. First, the solution will move from cloudy to transparent because the acetic acid in the vinegar reacts with the solid magnesium hydroxide particles to form dissolved material. Second, the indicator will turn a yellow-green color that persists for at least one minute. A persistent yellow-green color indicates that no more magnesium hydroxide remains in the mixture to neutralize the vinegar. A few tips here. As I carry out the titration, I notice the yellow-green color develops immediately upon addition of vinegar. I want to watch to see if the yellow-green color that originally develops starts to fade back to an orange color. If I see the color start to fade back to an orange hue, I know some magnesium hydroxide must remain because it's the only thing that can raise the pH. So if I see that, I know I need to add more vinegar. When the yellow color begins to persist for a long time, I slow down and only add one drop at a time. To hit the end point just right, I want to add a drop to a slightly orange-yellow mixture, observe a shift to greenish-yellow, and then observe that greenish tinge to remain for at least one minute, and sometimes two. It takes some patience, but with good technique, this experiment yields very good results. Please notice that the video you are watching is sped up quite a bit. This particular titration you see in this video actually took me about 15 minutes to complete. Like I said, you're going to need some patience. Watch really carefully now. You'll notice that the slight greenish tinge you see in the mixture fades over time. We're getting really close. I'll add one more drop. 
That did it. The slight green color you see that is developed here persisted for over a minute. Notice that we added a total of 2.04 grams of vinegar. Write that down. We're going to need that information later. Okay, it's time to run through our calculations. We have our chemical equation that describes the reaction that went on in the titration. We have our 2.04 grams of vinegar that were required to titrate 0.65 grams of milk of magnesia. If you look on a bottle of milk of magnesia, you'll see that it says it has 1,200 milligrams of magnesium hydroxide for every 15 milliliters of milk of magnesia. So we're going to have to convert our numerator, grams of vinegar, into milligrams of magnesium hydroxide, and we're going to have to convert our denominator, grams of milk of magnesia, into milliliters of milk of magnesia. Well, converting grams of milk of magnesia to milliliters of milk of magnesia, that can be done through the density, which I've measured the density of milk of magnesia. You can do this experiment on your own if you like, but I've found it to be 1.07 grams of milk of magnesia for every milliliter of milk of magnesia. I just placed the cup on a balance. It was 60 milliliters, and then I poured milk of magnesia into the cup until... Um, it reached that 60 milliliter mark. I read the mass, I read the volume, and from that I was able to get this particular density. Well, if we run through the math here, grams of milk of magnesia cancel, and that allows me to get this into grams of vinegar per milliliter of milk of magnesia, just like we need here on the denominator. So let's run that calculation, 2.04 divided by 0.65 times 1.07 that's uh, 3.36, so I have 3.36, let's see, that's going to be grams of vinegar for every milliliter of milk of magnesia, and I'm keeping this digit even though it's not significant to avoid a rounding error. Okay, now we're going to convert grams of vinegar into milligrams of magnesium hydroxide. This is going to take a bit. So let's take our 3.36 grams of vinegar for every milliliter of milk of magnesia. And now we're going to need to convert grams of vinegar into grams of acetic acid. We do that with the percent acidity of the, of the vinegar. And you'll notice it's 5% acidity. Well, that means there's 5 grams of acetic acid, which I'm going to abbreviate AA. It's just this chemical here, acetic acid. So there's 5 grams of acetic acid in every 100 grams of vinegar. That's what the 5% acidity means. So in this step, I'm able to convert grams of vinegar into grams of acetic acid. Now I want to use this equation up here to relate, you know, the amount of acetic acid to the amount of magnesium hydroxide. Well, to do that, I've, I've got to convert to moles, right? Because this equation talks to moles. So let's go ahead and convert my grams of acetic acid in a moles using the molar mass of acetic acid, which happens to be 60 grams of acetic acid is one mole of acetic acid. All right, now that we've converted to moles, I can use my chemical equation. Every two moles of acetic acid reacts with one mole of magnesium hydroxide. So you can write that in here. Two moles of acetic acid reacts with one mole of magnesium hydroxide. Now we can convert moles of magnesium hydroxide into grams using the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide, which happens to be 58.3 grams of magnesium hydroxide is a mole of magnesium hydroxide. Let's run this calculation and see where we're at at this point. So we have 3.36, whoops, 3.36 times 5 divided by 100. That's the acidity of the vinegar. And we divide by 60, the molar mass of acetic acid. And then we divide by 2 to account for 2 moles of acetic acid reacting with every mole of magnesium hydroxide. And then we multiply by the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide. What do we get? 
0.08, rounding up, that's going to be 2, 0.082, will that be grams of magnesium hydroxide for every milliliter of milk of magnesium. Let me just check my units here and make sure that's right. Grams of vinegar cancels grams of vinegar. Grams of acetic acid cancels grams of acetic acid. Mole of acetic acid cancels mole of acetic acid. Mole of magnesium hydroxide cancels mole of magnesium hydroxide. Well, let's see, I gotta get that in milligrams, don't I? So there's one gram is a thousand milligrams. So 0 0.082 times a thousand, that's gonna be 82 milligrams of magnesium hydroxide for every milliliter of milk of magnesia. But the bottle reports per 15 mils, so let's go ahead and multiply this by 15 mils. Let's see, 82 times 15, 1,230 milligrams of magnesium hydroxide for every 15 mils of milk of magnesia. That's not too bad. We were pretty close, just a little bit over.